Welcome to the MT Omar Halloween Horror Review Special. To fit with the theme of this season, there are three shows on TV right now that personify everything that Halloween is supposed to be. These are without a doubt three of the best TV shows ever created and they all just came back last week. And I have two guests with me at this time that wanted to join in and discuss these shows. So please welcome Jessica. Oh, I'm supposed to say it now? And Misty. Hi everyone, my name is Misty and welcome to MTO Reviews. The Walking Dead. Misty, overall, what was one thing that you took out of this episode tonight? Well, I didn't think that there'd be like a zombie this early in the episode, like like somebody turning in the group. From knowing the writers by the way that they like write in all their episodes, you could kind of expect them to kill somebody off that quickly. No, because I thought like it would be like a fresh start, so they'll just everything in the episode's gonna be good, but then like it didn't actually end up being good because they killed like two people. Right, it's one of those mixed things. The first episode of a new season is either gonna be Boss to the walls crazy or a setup episode with lots of talking this one was a mix of both not a lot happened but enough happened to keep you talking like what you were talking about the falling zombies that was pretty crazy it was kind of cool especially how in the like when they're running away like the helicopter it ends up falling down and everything that looked really cool it was sad though because the guy like um best boyfriend he was like trying to help the guy, but in the end he ended up dying. I had figured that he was gonna die already because like what she did, like she didn't say goodbye to someone like, yeah, he's always gonna die. I thought it was gonna be that um the guy stuck under the thing. I would have preferred if he died. Like it's his fault that that actually happened. Like he was stupid enough to go through the liquor and then like, like actually be clumsy enough to knock it down. Like I'm clumsy, but I know like I wouldn't have done that because I'm not that stupid. Exactly. That's what I would have preferred to happen instead, because that guy was just a guy. We know that he's not important. They could have killed him off here and no one would have cared. But Beth's boyfriend was Beth's boyfriend. He was one of the few guys that actually had an identity, and they killed him off in the first episode. At first I thought that was weird, until what happened later. Now, first let me take you guys back to our 100 rant video, to let you guys know just how I felt before this episode. Beth from The Walking Dead, she's got to be the most useless, irrelevant character in the history of television. And yet she's lasted for two seasons. What the hell is the point of her still being there? She doesn't contribute anything to the group. She doesn't have any effect on the story. And she's not that attractive. Well, it turns out all Beth needed was a little heel churn to make her even more interesting. And I'm relating this to wrestling because it's not just wrestling that this applies to. Television characters could benefit from heel turns too. And Beth is a perfect example of that. As a face, she was boring, her character served no purpose. Then as soon as she develops a more bitchy heel attitude, she instantly becomes more intriguing. You're interested in the change of her character. In this one episode, She's more relevant than she was in all of season three. There's pr basically like no use to her being on there because she wouldn't really do anything because she, she would just like stay there and like she'd just be there like sort of like an extra. Now she's more like I think she's strong because Daryl told her she didn't cry. She's not like, it's OK. I'm already used to it. So I kind of felt bad. Right. I'm sure she'll find someone else to hook up with. That'll probably be her character. Maybe she could be like the A.J. Lee of the group, and just be with everyone because she doesn't give a crap anymore. I think that would be interesting for her character. I think that she is going to get a new boyfriend, but, like, me and my sis thought that it would be Daryl, that she would get with Daryl, yeah, because in the preview, it looked like she, the way she was hugging him. I didn't even think of that. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah, I could see her trying to get with Daryl. 
and Daryl rejecting her, causing her to go psycho. And maybe she really will be like the AJ Lee of the group. And as a form of revenge, she'll start sleeping with everyone else in the group to try to make Daryl jealous. But Daryl won't give a crap because he's boss like that. Or, like, I'd also, like, seen her getting with Carl. But then after I'm all like, nah, he's too young. I mean, he hasn't had a girlfriend in basically, I guess, all of his life. So he'd probably want one. I'd actually like to see that. It's crazy, but I think it could work. You will play up on Beth's mental issues and Carl turning into more of the man's man of the group. Like a ladies man, like a player. I think that'd be pretty awesome. It would, because like... They'd just be like, wow, he has game. But then I think Carl would get one with um, one of the kids. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think him and the girl from the beginning are going to end up getting together. And that's another interesting thing, too. We were wondering this entire time where all the kids went during the zombie apocalypse. The whole season, the only kid that we've seen has been Carl. So it'll be interesting to see that the kids, for once, are actually going to start getting into it with the zombies. Because that's one thing that we still haven't seen out of the entire series. What do you think? I mean, it, the kids are less likely to survive during the apocalypse because, you know, the way that they'd act around everything. I think it'll come in handy that um, she was teaching them how to use knives. Because I think that actually comes in handy. She doesn't want to want what happened to Sophia happen to them. Good that they're teaching him like up front combat, like face to face, instead of like far away with the gun. Cause face to face, like you have more of a chance to, of like getting like zombies in your face instead of just like far away. Exactly. I don't get why that's even up for debate. I mean, what's gonna help these kids more in the future? If a zombie comes after one of these kids, are they gonna sit there and think, what would Cinderella do? Or are you gonna want them to kick that zombie's ass? That's how I look at it. And it looks like they're going to be put into that situation sooner rather than later. Because right at the end of this episode, we have our first infection in the group. And this came completely out of left field. I don't think anyone expected that to happen. Now the big question is, what happened? Like, I think there's something in the food. Because cause in the ending, like he just collapsed out of nowhere. And you obviously know that he wasn't bitten. So something happened to him. So I'm thinking that the zombie thing came from, like, pigs or something. Sort of like the, is it called the swine flu? The pig, like, it even died. Like, for no reason. Like, there was, like, it just got sick out of nowhere. So that's what I'm thinking, that the animals and people, like, the food's just, like, contaminated. That's an interesting theory. We'll have to find out about that next episode, but I think we just about covered everything that we needed to. So we're about to move on to American Horror Story. But before we get into any of that... Is there anything you want to add before we move on? The bad thing I have to say about, I think, The Walking Dead would be to kill off less people. Because, uh, like, they could add a character and then, like, start liking them and then, like, after a while they'll just kill them. And then I'd hate that. It would be like, really? Like, um, the old guy, what was the old guy's name? Who was that old guy and that got eaten by a zombie? I'm all like, why? Why did he have to get eaten by a zombie? Agreed. I'm still pissed off that they killed Andrea. That was a load of bullcrap. But moving on. American Horror Story Season 3, Coven. What I love about this show is how unique it is. It's like what John Carpenter originally wanted Halloween to be. A different horror concept to look forward to every year. I was skeptical heading into this season because I didn't think the concept of witches would be able to live up to the same uniqueness that the other two seasons had. Because when you think about it, the only good witch shows that we've seen on TV were Sabrina and Charmed. But so far, I've really been getting into it. What do you think, Jessica? I actually like witches. I actually wanted to like actually become a witch. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, actually, this Halloween, I think I'm gonna dress as a witch slash princess and Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Well, you certainly got the evil witch laugh down just fine, but let's jump into the show. I like how this does have that charmed element. You have four witches, all with their own unique power and ability, trying to live amongst humans. That's interesting. And I'm just going to say it right now, thank God for Emma Roberts. Not only does she come across with that same bitchy attitude that she had at the end of Scream 4, 
But we also get to see her naked, which is always a good thing. I love Emma Roberts, and we've seen nudity in American Horror Story before. And the disclaimers even say at the beginning of the show that there's going to be nudity in this season. So hopefully, that's my Emma Roberts. What do you guys think about Emma Roberts? Oh, she's just like weird and i thought it was sad in the episode where she's like getting raped i kind of was happy she flipped over that they called van um but then i was sad because i knew tate was in the when i saw Emma roberts i i was all like oh that's cool she's in the episode but then when i saw what she was able to do i'm all like wow that's even more cool i like that she's a bitch that's what i like because because they seem like they could like just get control of everybody one power i like and I don't think I've ever seen this done before. Precious is a human voodoo doll. That's a really useful power to have because from what we learned, there's a bunch of witch hunters going around burning any witch they can find. She might not even have to worry about that. She's virtually unkillable. I like the voodoo thing. I would like totally like start stabbing myself on purpose and like look at somebody and start laughing while I'm doing it. Like the other day I got restrained and it really hurt and I just started laughing. So if somebody were to call me fat or something, I would, like, start stabbing myself and kill them. So, yeah. She's funny, too, because I forgot what, but I think Emma Roberts had told her something. And so um, her reply was, I'll eat you. And so that's what I started cracking up at that. I also like that Jedi mind power that Fiona has. I've always liked that power. That just seems like one of the most useful powers to have. I mean, if I had that power, i definitely use it on the writers of this show to write in a nude lesbian scene between Emma Roberts and Violet. But, uh, beside the point, speaking of Violet, she's the only one with a power that sucks. This has to be the worst power that I've ever seen done in the history of anything. Death by Snoo Snoo. How much you want to bet that a woman wrote this? Also, what I liked in the beginning of the show is when she was, like, doing that guy and then he just started dying. That was kind of sad. <laughs> and then I thought it was funny when she was in the hospital and she got on top of that guy and started doing it with him too. And then he died. Oh, she was looking at him like, yeah, like, awesome. you deserve this. <laughs> you, you, you take that and you like it. <laughs> Not a bad way to go out. I mean, if I had to die anyway, that's how I'd want to go out. But one other thing I like about this show is how it keeps all the familiar characters from the first two seasons, which helps. You can actually look at them and remember, hey, that's that one person from the last season. Oh, my my favorite season is the first season because I like the story between Tate and Violet. I thought it was really nice. In the preview for like the first season that they were standing like in front of, um, what was it? They were standing in front of something and they were just staring at each other like love at first sight or something and I really liked it. I was like, oh my God, yes, they're getting back together. That's one thing fans of this show wanted to see, Tate and Violet getting back together. And what I love is that even though these aren't the same characters, it's the same actors. So you still get that feeling of, yes, they're back together. But I got mad in the beginning because I really thought he was just going to die. What the fuck? And I thought he really died. And I was like, so they just put it in there to just to tease me. And then I saw the preview for the second episode and that he was going to come back to life. And I was like, oh my god. You know what I thought was funny is that the girls were like, pick your favorite part and make the perfect man. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I would think that that's going to play a role later on. That none of the body parts are really his. So maybe he's going to end up getting possessed in a way by the spirits of the other guys. And the other guys were rapists, so that's not good. And considering technically he has the penis of a rapist, I think that'll come to play later on. And considering Violet could kill him again if he were to do something like that, that wouldn't be good. I like how she ends up like crying and then kisses him and then he ends up coming back and I feel like she bring him back. And then the lady was like, um, I knew there was someone out there that was just like me. I was thinking because she... She kills people by having sex with them, but then she ended up kissing Tate, and then he, he came back to life. Oh, like Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> that was my first thought on the show when I had seen her kill somebody. I'm like, well, if she could kill somebody, then she could obviously bring him back to life. I think, um, actually, that she could only do it with people that she, like, 
really really likes and that they like her back or something that she could do that with them and they won't die you know what would be sad if she never comes back for him but they still show him in the episode like crying over her or something or like something like that or or he hooks up with the other lady that he stays with or something i think she's lesbian because the way she was looking at um zoe i think she's lesbian because the way she was just looking at her looked like she wanted to like kiss her like even me and my friend were talking about it saying that it looked like she actually wanted to kiss her or do something to her no they could look at each other just that the way she was looking at her like there was a certain way to it like it wasn't just like a glance or like just like a normal stare like there was something in her eye like just like the way she looked at her oh i hope she's a lesbian i hope that's who emma roberts ends up having the lesbian scene with that would just make the show even more awesome but anyway We'll have to wait and see. So that just about concludes this portion of the discussion. Neither Jessica nor Misty have watched Supernatural, so I'm going to talk about that on my own. But Misty, if you would please do us the honors of signing off. Yada yada yada. Blah blah blah. Good and bye. Supernatural Season 9. For anyone who doesn't know what the show Supernatural is, this has every element of horror that you could imagine. Vampires, zombies, ghosts, witches, angels, demons, any type of horror concept that you can think of, you've seen it done on this show. I've always dreamed of a show like this that just takes everything horror and puts it into one. That's why I love this show. Over the past few seasons though, it sort of strained away from that concept and gone into a more heaven versus hell type of direction, which I still enjoy, but I prefer the monster of the week style episodes that everyone seems to hate because that's why I fell in love with this show in the first place. So I hope we see more of that this season, or at least next season. So let's get into it. Quick summary. Castiel, an angel, was tricked by another angel into casting all the angels out of heaven and down to earth. So the big story of the season is angels are roaming the earth, hunting Castiel down in search of revenge. Meanwhile, the heroes, Sam and Dean Winchester, battle with demons of hell as a higher level, sexy demon named Abaddon tries to proclaim herself the queen of hell, while the king of hell is held captive by Sam and Dean. Now that I've explained everything, I like the setup. Not too complicated, and there's a little something interesting in everything. And Abaddon is one of the hottest villains that the show has ever had. I'm glad they were able to bring back the actress that played her in the last season, instead of replacing her like they do with all demons. We might actually see Crowley team up with Sam and Dean to battle Abaddon at some point in the season. I think all the demons are going to end up turning on him eventually. And what I'd love to see is if he could bring back some of the old demons like Meg and Ruby. Or somehow bring back Anna even though she was an angel. Or bring back Bella even though she's on Walking Dead now. To fight on his side. I'd be severely disappointed if those characters didn't come back at least once before the show ends. But speaking of hot chicks, we were also introduced to a new hot character, and knowing the way the fans are, she'll probably get killed off within the first three episodes because fangirls always get jealous and complain whenever there's a new hot face girl on the show. But she's got a backstory that her family was killed because of Sam. And again, that's interesting because what I like about this season so far is everything ties together nicely and you know it's going to lead to something, but you can't exactly tell what. But just one little nitpick, with the way the van was rocking and she was moaning, that leads me to believe that she was actually having sex with the monster rather than just killing it. That is dedication, that makes me like her even more. And the last thing, Sam being possessed by an angel. I like that. For once, an angel that can actually do something helpful. Castiel has always had an excuse as to why he couldn't do anything. This time, an angel can actually come into play and save them at any time. It's the perfect weapon. This makes them unstoppable. At least until they meet another angel, but still, it's awesome. But anyway, that just about does it for this week. This has been MTO with the MTO more Review saying yada yada yada. Blah blah blah. The end.